Hi, this is James Mullen. It's James the Wine Guy here to talk about Negro Amaro. It's a fantastically wonderful varietal coming from Puglia, the boot hill of Italy. Now, it's a beautiful grape that it can be 100% and it depends on its region, its uh, DOC or its IGT region within Puglia in terms of its percentage. But it can be blended and it plays well with Primitivo and Malvesia Nera. Now, this word Negro Amaro, in this example here, this shows Negro Amaro. So they've taken out the O on the wine or in the, in the wine varietal, so Negra Amaro, as opposed to, you see here it says Negro Amaro del Salento. So that's just one of the unique characteristics. That's a synonym for this wine grape. Fantastically beautiful, extremely dry. And uh, one thing that I've, I've noticed is that um, Oz Clark has called this a rather odd tasting grape. And that's where I take a complete departure and say, don't understand, does not compute, and uh, really it's a personal preference at that point because I think there's some absolute value in this wine grape and uh, just about any wine grape that I've enjoyed. It has value in terms of where it's grown, its heritage in terms of its winemaking style, its um, complete history. It is, um, it's a fantastically beautiful grape that just deserves its attention. It deserves a place at the table, shall we say. Now, um, when you think of this word, Negra Amaro is, um, Amaro is an Italian word coming from a Greek word and uh, essentially means bitter. So Negro Amaro, Negro of course meaning black. So a uh, black uh, bitter grape. But instead I would steer away from that original meaning of bitter because I don't think that's what it is. I think it's a dryness and it's extremely dry. And it's something that my first tasting, I thought, oh, it's, uh, it's okay, it's good. It'll do uh, me for right now. But ultimately, what came from that was this longing for this grape. Now, it's a really ancient grape. We, we're not sure how long it's been around. But uh, at least in the Roman period, this grape was kept alive after the Roman decline in Benedictine and Greek Orthodox monasteries in Puglia. Now, there's a DNA linkage to Verdicchio and San Giovese, but we don't know what that relationship is. Now, there are different combinations, again, as I mentioned, in terms of DOC or IGT wines. There's quite a number in terms of maybe 70 to 80% or maybe 100% can be allowed um, and uh, also dictating the varietals that it can be combined with. Now, what's interesting is say uh, there's about 16,760 hectares or 41,000 acres. That's down from say the previous count, which is about 31,000 hectares or 75,000 acres. So in a very short period of time, so it was saved in its, from its Roman decline and uh, it has rebirth, and now I believe, in my opinion, tasting this at many wine events and food events, is that this wine is experiencing a renaissance, and it should. There's no reason for a decline on this wine. It's extremely dry, uh, beautiful dark red uh, tones, so there's a little bit of spice notes on this, and um, it's a gracious, gracious uh, acid structure. So it's something to, to give a try, enjoy, and, um, you know, you, you can hear what I have to say about it and, and hear my praises for this wine. Uh, but it's really up to you to give this a try. Uh, again, as I always say, ask for good, uh, well-stocked wine merchant. Bring some in. If you don't have any, they know what it is. And also, you, maybe your favorite restaurant, your uh, favorite wine director. Ask them. Bring in some Negro Amaro and uh, bring some wines in from Puglia. Because I think uh, they definitely know that. So they know this uh, whole category of wines. Ask them, to, ask them to bring it in. Enjoy. Try taste and um, I think you'll agree it definitely has a place at the table for more wine reviews please go to jamesthewineguy.com please subscribe to my videos on YouTube Facebook Twitter Vimeo Google Plus Pinterest salute